Welcome and thank you for joining us for today's e referrals to the Sydney Local Health District HealthLink Smartphones webinar. I would like to start by acknowledging the traditional custodians and sovereign people of the land across which we work. I recognize their continuing connection to land, water and community and pay respect to elders past, present and emerging. I also extend that respect to any Aboriginal colleagues who might be joining us today. Please know that this webinar will be recorded and will be available on your YouTube channel within the next couple of days. The participant evaluation survey link will pop up on your screens at the end of the webinar. We appreciate your feedback. Please complete this to allow us to improve the program. Please ensure that you submit your questions to the speaker in the Q&A box throughout the presentation. To view this box, hover over the toolbar at the bottom of your screen. My name is Alex de Lezal, and I am the Digital Health and QI team leader. It gives me a pleasure to introduce the speakers. Our speakers tonight are Paul Bennett, Program Manager, Health Pathways, Sydney, and Sydney Local Health District GP e-referral project. With over 30 years experience as a registered nurse and health manager in the United Kingdom and Australia, Paul has been the manager of the highly successful Health Pathway Sydney program, supporting general practice since 2013, and is also responsible for the delivery of electronic GP referral systems to the Sydney Local Health District hospitals and services. Our second speaker tonight is Sarah Friend, e-referral project officer at Sydney Local Health District. Sarah is a registered nurse and has been working on the e-referral project since its inception trailing different general practice and service referral products. Please welcome Paul and Sarah. Thank you, Alex, and thank you, everyone, for, um, for joining us this evening. It's a, a great pleasure to be with you. Um, this is, I think, the third or fourth one of these um, webinars that we've done, highlighting what we're doing with electronic referral for general practitioners in certain local health districts. And, and each time we've done this, um, it's just been fantastic to see um, a great um, number of GPs taking interest and and kind of um, then hopefully moving on to, to using the system to make their referrals. Um, so just before I start kind of providing you some background to where we are with the program, um, I would just like to acknowledge the traditional custodians of the land on which we're all meeting as, across our various parts of metropolitan Sydney. So next slide, please, Sarah. So as a bit of an overview, as Alex mentioned, we have been undertaking the Health Pathway Sydney um, web platform for a number of years. And as we've been building all of that rich clinical content for those pathways and holding collaborative work groups for young practitioners and the specialists from the district side, et cetera, one of the themes that was always coming through in, in those meetings was the need to move away from fax referrals. So as a response to that, Sydney Local Health District started doing some investigations with, with us as, as the team for that and our colleagues in, in kind of IT and looking at various systems. And um, we looked at systems from across the world. And over a couple of year process of evaluation and review and sample testing, we came to the decision in, um, in late 2018 that the most suitable and, and probably most applicable electronic referral process for central Sydney would be to use the HealthLink smartphone technology. So as we know, HealthLink is widely available across the vast majority of general practice in Sydney local health district. It's there as part of the healthy net um, set up for um, the transmission of secure messaging and discharge letters, pathology, et cetera, out to general practice. But general practitioners were also very familiar with using it for our roads and maritime requests and also to our colleagues at Chris and Brian Lifehouse, who have around about a dozen separate services um, connected to health link smartphones. So following a, a six month trial with services such as um, rheumatology at RPA and hematology at RPA and Concord, we made that move to expand to slowly then bring on additional ambulatory care services across Sydney local health district, not only at the, the four um, main hospitals, but also to our community services as well. 
some of the benefits of, of health link um, from a general practice perspective is the fact that it's it's an auto populated tool it's integrated into your practice software if you're a user of medical director best practice and genie and there's also then um, the health link portal which we'll talk more about um, in a little while enables those um, practices that don't have those three specific software types or may actually still be a paper-based practice as well. The, the benefits at the district side is the fact that we are receiving that referral. The referral is recognized, it's time stamped, there's governance to that process with the referral. And it also allows us for better communication, A, to acknowledge that we've received that referral, and, and that's a pretty much an instantaneous thing at the firing of the referral act towards the services. But it also then gives us that ability to actually tell you the triage outcome from that because as you all know and have all of experienced with sending in a, a fax it's has the fax got to the right location you may or may not get a response from the service to confirm that and and it becomes that long wait and that constant process of, of having to phone up to to confirm receipt of, of a referral etc via fax and paper methods E-referral helps dissipate all of that because it's all recognized and all times and, and recorded in, in not only at the district side within our receiving platform, but also within your general practice software. Uh, next slide, Sarah, please. So as I said, we started connecting on additional services from around about 2019. And as you can see from that long list in front of you, um, we did a lot of focus in the early days of, of bringing Concord Hospital on and, and across 2018, 2019 and 2020, we brought on around about 80% of the available ambulatory care services that general practice can refer to. We have a few niche services there still to come to, um, such as the burns unit and plastic surgery and an oncology, but um, we're working towards those as we move forward. Um, across last year, we brought on a bulk load of Rob Prince Alfred services. So all the ones listed there are now enabled to um, receive electronic referral. We've also got the RPA virtual COVID-19 monitoring form, which we established at the outbreak of um, COVID-19 pandemic didn't get much use um, as at this for the, I suppose, the first 18 months of, of, of the pandemic, most of that monitoring was taken, all of that management of COVID-19 was, was being orchestrated from a hospital perspective. But as you're all well aware, um, just before the, the end of last year, that model changed as, as Omicron came and the numbers were, were growing almost exponentially, where general practice was, um, was a vital part in, in managing Omicron in the community. And so the COVID-19 form became into its own as a way of general practice to escalate um, for um, hospital-based monitoring or for hospital-based admission for their COVID patients in the community. And it's also then being used at the moment for those um, patients that have been escalated at for monoclonal antibody therapies at the district. So that's really good. Um, you see, we've got a few services at Canterbury and that will expand as we go through a lot of redevelopment and at the Canterbury site, not only in terms of, of infrastructure and buildings, but in how our patients um, functions on that site as well. Um, Sarah? Oh, well, there you go. I'm going to actually hand over to Sarah now to, to talk you through how to use um, HealthLink. Thanks, Sarah. Thanks, Paul. And good evening, everybody. Um, before I commence on the demonstration, I just wanted to highlight the different entry points on how to access HealthLink from either within your practice software or via the My HealthLink portal. So for best practice users by um, within the patient file by selecting the new letter icon, um, a pop-up window will appear, um, you select health link and then the health link forms then become available and visible. Um, you'll see on this particular window, you'll also see previously transmitted referrals um, for your patient as well. For Genie users from within the patient file, selecting tools and health link online, 
you can then commence um, referring via electronic referral. Medical director from within the patient file, you select the health link tab and then new form. You can also see under the health link uh, tab, the previously transmitted referrals as well for your patient. And finally, my health link portal users. Um, this is available for GPs or allied health practitioners that may not have best practice genie or medical director. Um, to commence a new form, you just select the new form icon um, and then the form will then open. I'll demonstrate this in a second, but um, regardless of the software system you're using or if you're accessing HealthLink via the portal, um, you'll see the referred services list. And from here, you select Sydney Local Health District to commence your referral. So by selecting Sydney Local Health District, um, what will appear in a second is the services list on the left-hand side of the screen. So here you can select your service and then the facility you'd like to refer to. Referring to Sydney Local Health District, you select Sydney Local Health District services here. And then the service list appears on the left-hand side. So tonight I'll demonstrate the dermatology form, select the facility and then click continue. Um, as highlighted before, the health link referral is made up of the tabs on the left-hand side of the screen. These are standard across all of the Sydney LHG forms. So there's consistency with the information you'll see. Um, mandatory fields are indicated by the red asterisks. And um, just quickly going through all the fields that we were just discussing before, you can make different selections. The urgent field here can be selected um, with your details put in. Reason for referral, as I indicated, was a free text field for this particular form, but there are different variations um, depending on the specialty you're referring to. And then just touching on the fields we're discussing a second ago regarding consideration for telehealth, um, reasonable adjustments required for disability, and if the patient has a care or support person, you can include their details here. And finally, on this page, um, the health pathways links and the measurement details table um, will be auto-populated from your practice software. However, if you are referring via the portal, um, you can manually enter the information here. So the attachments tab um, allows you to include lots of different file types with your referral. So whether that's radiology reports, uh, blood results, care plans, et cetera, um, HealthLink supports a variety of these file types you can see up the top. The table um, that you can see here enables you to um, quickly attach some file types that have been recently included in the patient's file in your software. However, if there's additional um, documents you'd like to include from the patient file, you can select browse for patient document and that will interrogate your EMR further or uh, browse for local file and that will um, link you to your desktop and you can upload files there. Um, but a good way to check how many files you do have attached that we indicate here on the tile that there's been two reports selected for this referral. Medications and warnings um, are auto-populated from your practice software. However, if you are a My Portal user, you can manually enter the information here just by using the plus button. Um, but if you do have the information auto-populated, um, bits that you would not like to include in the referral can be removed um, and then select bits of information that are relevant. The history tab, um, much the same as what we just saw with the medical warnings, you can select the information that is relevant um, and exclude bits that are not. The patient information tab should be um, largely auto-populated from your practice software and includes um, lots of demographic information that's really helpful for um, our clinic staff to book appointments. Um, including preferred contact details, um, address, Medicare numbers, et cetera. You can also send um, a referral through if they don't have a Medicare card and you just need to provide a reason as to why. And the last tab, refer information, is where your information will be captured. So here we have your provider number, um, your practice details, and also your practice information, so phone number and health link account. So to transmit the referral on the very top um, right-hand side of the screen, there's a submit button. You can also park the referral if you're not ready to transmit at that point in time. Um, if you are ready and you've completed all the mandatory fields, 
the submission will go through and what you will receive um, shortly is confirmation text at the top of the screen just indicating that the referral has gone through the system. So in regards to where copies of those transmitted referrals live and also um, status updates that the service may send, um, for best practice, Jeannie and medical director, they're within the patient file, but also in your holding files um, for your respective um, software. And also for my health link portal, you'll have all of that information within the portal. Um, just to flag that for all the Sydney LHD um, services, you'll have that initial system acknowledgement letting you know that the referral's gone through to the department. But if there's further information required, you'll get that information back into your software, also for accepted. And if it's not been accepted, you'll receive that correspondence as well. For you. So um, in terms of coming next, we've got some exciting things um, happening at the district, um, not only in terms of, of e-referral and and how that happens from a general practitioner perspective and the amount of all, uh, new services coming on board from that, but also um, news about how we're going to start managing um, antenatal shared care or uh, all of maternity and women's health referrals as well in a collaborative collaboration with um, New South Wales Health. So over the, the next um, 12 to 18 months, I've added 18, I've say up to 18 months, just in case there is any more sting in the tail from Omicron that disrupts um, normal functioning in how we're able to do this, not only from us as a project team at the districts and the staff taking on these the forms, but also in our vendors as well, because I um, have to point out a lot of our, our, our vendors have been doing a lot of additional work supporting um, regions across across Australia and New Zealand in, in terms of, of, of COVID support. So this year for RPA and Balmain, we will see uh, aged care come on board. So that'll be all of your care, the elderly referrals coming on to that. Allergy services will get their own um, referral form. They can be referred to now as part of our immunology services, but we're gonna tweak that out to make a more specific allergy service form for RPA and Concord. Um, physiotherapy um, and, and a lot of the other allied health services as well we've come in on board and um, BMD and osteoporosis um, they'll be coming on board as we bring on specific diabetes and general endocrinology forms for RPA and we already have BMD and osteoporosis um, forms for Canterbury the rheumatology element of RPA and for Concord. So there'll just be some restructure happening in those and we'll put some, some news items out to say when that's all happening. Some various bespoke um, referral forms for neurosurgery, um, sleep at Concord, and, and then some more complex builds then for things like chronic pain services where we're trying to take the pressure off um, a lot of the content that gets um, sent back out to general practice as part of that standard referral to the chronic pain services as well. And, and also then other services for um, Sydney District Nursing to make that easier to refer to. And as the role of RPA virtual moves on from just being very much COVID focused and, and, and moving into, I suppose, uh, more of that care in the community and more involvement with, with general practice, particularly on some of the chronic conditions, we'll start building forms um, for those specific forms. But the first one is going to be about um, general practice management and support general practice management of minor fractures. Um, in using a virtual care model. So very similar to the model we have at Balmain um, general practice casualty for fracture management, but taking that to a, to a virtual um, setting and expanding it from just being around that Balmain pockets. And you can see a couple of the other services there, we've got lined up plastics and rehabilitation. The, I suppose, the golden ticket of electronic referral locally is, is, is women's health, particularly maternity. So on the, we are aiming that on the 27th of April, there will be um, electronic referral available for um, maternity services at um, RPA. So that includes midwifery group practice, birth centre referrals, medical managed referrals, antenatal shared care. We'll all go through that process. 
That referral form will show you that shortly will replace the current process of not only you as a GP having to fill out a standard referral or even the online referral, but will also replace the, the booking, the first appointment booking form that either you as young practitioner or in some instances, um, the mother to be completing. So over the, the next two months, we'll start to issue a, a lot of guidance notes about how that process is coming in. We'll also bring on RPA Gynecology, who is an extremely busy service. They will have their own bespoke form as well, and there'll be um, forms for fertility at RPA. So there'll be all of that women's and babies in that unit. Maternity at Canterbury will take on a very similar form where the service models exist. Um, around about the middle of the year, once we've um, embedded the RPA maternity form, then we'll stretch that out to Canterbury as well. So that means that all maternity referrals, regardless of the model, um, into Canterbury and RPA and the midwifery group practice at Concord will be accessible on electronic referral. The exciting part of that is at the moment, all of our referrals go to HealthLink portal uh, or HealthLink platform, I should say, called RMS Light. Um, while it's giving us a, a hospital end, actually detailed records and a, a detailed registration process for all of those referrals for in some instances for the first time ever, um, it doesn't fully interact with a lot of our software, our EMR, our appointment scheduling systems. So what we're doing with the Women's and Babies Services is using the new state pilot platform called Engage Outpatients that will not only take all those electronic referrals, um, it will start talking to our scheduling system, to, which will then enable direct communications to the patients as well about appointment choices, et cetera as well as all of that communication that you would expect from, from the health link forms back to you to keep you updated on progress of those referrals, which is really, really um, a bit of a game changer for us in that sense. And just as critically, because we're very much aware that not every GP has the ability to send an electronic referral. So we're building into this the ability to digitally capture faxed referrals. So I'm going to show you a bit more about that shortly, um, but we will literally have a one stop shop for referrals um, um, pretty soon for women's and babies. So the screen that um, Sarah's got up, this is from our test site. So you're actually seeing a lot more services than you would normally see when you log into to HealthLink portal in your software. Um, for the purpose of bringing these new services on, um, they will sit under their own little banner. So over towards the, the, the right of the screen there, you can just see sitting in the health district, but they're in that red box. We'll have a second box, which they'll sit together. That will specifically say Sydney Local Health District Women's Health. Um, eventually they will all sit under the, the, the same umbrella, but just because we're using slightly different process, they'll, they'll sit quite distinct. But again, we'll provide a lot of support leading up to that. Um, next slide, Sarah. Ah. Actually, I'm going to hand back over to Sarah because Sarah's going to give you a sneak peek at the maternity form. And, and we'd love any questions about the form as well um, in, in questions um, section. So thank you, Sarah. Thank you, Paul. Please let me know. And I apologise that my screen was not sharing before. Um, you can so, see it. <laughs> oh, wonderful. <laughs> so I'm in medical director. So just to um, show you where the maternity form leaves as Paul just highlighted will be Sydney local health district women's health that will have the gynecology and fertility forms um, we have been told these are sitting relatively either next to each other or um, below our existing Sydney LHD link for the time being it will just have the three services here and by selecting maternity RPA will default and then you click continue and the form will load um, the maternity form is made up of the tabs as we looked at before with the dermatology form. So still has the same look and feel. However, it has been um, customized specifically for maternity. The same um, principles apply with anything that's mandatory. There are red asterisks. There are a couple of new um, fields that we've built in specifically for this form, um, including information boxes that pertain to um, 
information about the different models of care available that you can refer to if you need any more information. So we've made the first field of the maternity form um, the point where you can select the preferred model of care. There's also the ability, um, not at the moment, just because the system isn't configured, but to select a provider or unnamed referral. Um, the standard fields are much the same regarding referral period, interpreter required. If the referral is urgent, that can also be selected. And we have divided the maternity form, I guess, into two components. There's information regarding the current pregnancy. So you can select if they, um, you know, have pre if they've got multiple pregnancies. Um, there's some mandatory fields here. And also then as we make our way through the form, um, we can also indicate if they've had a previous pregnancy. This will open up um, a variety of different um, bits of clinical history that you can include, some of which, once they're selected, will have a text field where you can provide more information in this instance of the preterm delivery. Um, making our way further down the form, there's also a free text field um, regarding other bits of history that you may want to include with the referral. Also, the pathology lab and radiology clinic um, information can also be included here. Um, the service has requested that if available to include pathology and ultrasound results um, with the referral at the time, if, if applicable. Um, and then we have some other fields regarding to the telehealth consideration and carers, et cetera. Um, we will link to the maternity health pathways as well, um, but should you have any more information, you can refer there. You would go through the normal process of completing um, the required fields in the tabs and then upon submission, um, click submit. The acknowledgement process will be similar. You'll get that system acknowledgement letting you know that the referral has been transmitted through and also status updates um, once that referral has been received and is starting to progress through triage and it's been accepted and so on. So just hand back to Paul now. Thank you, Sarah. So um, I mentioned about fax referrals. So one of the, the, the brilliant aspects that the new um, receiving platform will give us will be to be able to digitize fax referrals. So um, there will always be a place for fax referrals and that's where the systems there's downtime in systems or whether there are um, small pockets of general practice that um, aren't electronic or at this point in time can't access HealthLink um, because of their practice software or um, for just other kind of standard issues. So one of the, I suppose, the significant changes that we're introducing, the fax numbers will be the same. It'll be the same standard number you've used for maternity referrals for, for the last kind of 10, 20 years. What will be different is that we will start requiring the use of a fax cover sheet. Um, there's one on the screen there. They will be the same cover sheet for all the services. Um, what the new process does is digitize and will identify the name of the service from what you put in. So it'll be the case that you would say um, maternity and by the mere fact it's going to that number, it will, it will recognize it and pull it. From a GP perspective, they, we can make these and we will issue these as templates that will fit into your practice software or they can be completed by the old fashioned pen and, and block capitals to complete it. Both ways work really well. The digitization practice um, captures all of that information. But what this means is that it'll go into an auto process and will upload into the system. For those referrals that don't come through, and we know there will always um, be referrals that end up coming through traditional ways, or, or there's been a misfile when they put them through the machine. Those re fax referrals will still always be captured to that number, and we have a process then where we, we will get the, the admin team will get notified and they'll be able to extract those and, and enter them into the system. In the same way, there will always be a safety net of paper referrals referrals arriving with the mum to be etc or as we expand to other services with the patient we have the ability to, to scan and, and transcribe those into the system so 
within hopefully a, a shortish period of time, um, you will have the benefit that when you've fired off a referral and you just haven't had back or you want to just make an inquiry on that referral, you'll be able to contact the service and they'll have that the, the status of that referral, etc. Um, on one screen, there won't be any of them having to look through reams of fax referrals, booklets, other spreadsheets, it will all be in one place. And, and as we expand the system and we get greater governance of all these referrals, there are obviously pieces being put into place that eventually there will be one stop referrals. Um, contact points for, for you as general practice to be able to contact one number and say, can I have the status of my referral, etc. So it's all really, really good. And moving on from that, because as we know, the whole process isn't just about the referral coming in, that being the end of it. So uh, there'll be those um, ongoing acknowledgements and triage notifications to that referral. But where the way we are looking and building a digital front door will and greater use of things like secure messaging back to you, because nearly every general practice has got a secure messaging account, is to be able to bounce back ongoing communications to those and be able to use secure messaging in a more robust way as well with some of our specialist services, particularly in the cancer area. So you can get uh, a faster response on the decisions from MDTs for certain cancer types etc and allow you to take be more involved in that patient care with with our kind of specialist nurses as as members of those mdts so that's all really good so over the, the coming weeks again we'll start um, some more press um, about bringing on this new process for um for facts into the maternity and um, gynecology and fertility service at rpa so the big question I suppose everyone wants to know is when that is going to happen. So we are aiming to deliver the new maternity forms um, on the 27th of April. So we are working to that date. We are just finishing and um, completing the build process. And, and obviously with that is, is a, a very heavily involved testing process. And then we begin that, that training element internally uh, of all the key staff within Women's and Babies, which is over 100 midwives alone, as well as all the clinicians and the admin staff as well as, as what we then um, provide to you as, as general practice with the support of our colleagues in the digital health team at um, Central Eastern Sydney PHA, et cetera. Um, next slide, Sarah, please. And that takes us to that. So as I said, um, none of this would be possible without the support of the digital health team at the primary head health network. Um, there's heaps of information on the PHN website um, that kind of gives you an up-to-date um, slice of what forms are available. Our contact points are on there for Sarah and I, as well as Alex, Arturo, and the rest of the team um, there at the PHN to provide support about using HealthLink um, within your practice, um, etc. as well then as, as, as main support numbers by from the vendor itself there at HealthLink. This is all on Health Pathways as well. So if there's ever any, any issues, um, you can either go to the PHN website or to Health Pathways for some more support information on that. And as you see on the screen, Sarah and I's number is on there and we're always more than happy to, to take supporting calls and um, from general practice as we move forward. And Okay, I've already mentioned secure messaging, but as I said, we are um, actively um, seeking to bring more of our services and engage them with secure messaging. Um, just to uh, kind of um, take some of the burden out of, of, of sharing documents with each other, particularly around pathology, radiology, to make that a more robust process and a more governance process. Um, so again, keep your eyes on that space, but um, just before Omicron started, we started working with the GP Can Share um, program at uh, Sydney Local Health District about enabling better communication for our three cancer streams for prostate cancer, breast cancer and 
bowel cancer. So moving forward, when you make those referrals to those services and it needs to go in BT, there will be um, nurses communicating back to you with the outcomes in a lot quicker time than we've traditionally managed via kind of doing formal clinic letters and, and corresponding that way. Okay. Um, thank you, Sarah. And uh, to get the plug in for Health Pathways, um, again, continue to use it. And, and uh, don't forget, it, it is there, it is um, a, a living um, tool which provides um, lots of robust information, particularly in, in where we've been over the last 18 months with, um, with, with COVID-19 and the ongoing content. And even um, in the last 24 hours, we've put um, uh, a deal of information to deal with just the, 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 the new um, antiviral, oral antiviral treatments for um, COVID-19. You'll find all the information about how you can um, prescribe and get that dispensed um, on health pathways. So um, back to you, Alex, and um, we've got some questions. Sure. Um, we do have a couple of questions. Some of them you already answered, Paul. <laughs> um, I, I will just um, ask, what is the situation um, in the Southeastern Sydney Local Health District? You've got one health professional who is based in St. George. Okay. But, um, the question was, when can it be used in uh, St. George and Sutherland hospitals? Um, I can't give you any definite on that because Sarah and I from Sydney Local Health District, um, we have done a lot of, um, I suppose, meetings and promotional work with South East Sydney LHD. They are very keen to take on electronic referral. Um, whether they use HealthLink or go with another system, we have um, no idea on that. Um, and a lot of the other LHDs are in the same position, but most at the moment are holding fire with making a commitment to work with a particular vendor because they're waiting on the outcome of the trial that we're undertaking at maternity of the Engage Outpatients platform. So once we get towards the end of the year and the pilot that we're running there and our colleagues in northern New South Wales are conducting at Lismore Hospital, I think there'll be a better sense then that um, where we go from there with that platform and a wider rollout or making that available to all of the LHDs over the next two years. Um, the good thing is, is that the platform that we are building for that is vendor agnostic. So, so South East Sydney could go with HealthLink as we've done, they could go with BPAC Cent as Hunter New England have, or they could go the Telstra Argus route as another um, vendor that's, that's doing some space in the Australian market. So I think a lot of people are just waiting to see the outcome of, of the Engage Outpatients platform, but others may jump on it and just go through a digitized fax process anyway. So, and if that's the case, then they are gonna have to build a lot more templates and to make life that much easier for, for you as general practitioners. And I should have, if as a GP in St. George, you do have access because we've made this um, primary health network wide um, in our delivery, because we know that patients who might live in Marrickville may see their GP over the border and etc. So it is that case that that healthcare doesn't just live in a suburb. So um, if you have a patient that fits the bill, is geographically within Sydney LHD, or even if it's appropriate as a tertiary referral, you can use the HealthLink portal. So, or then HealthLink to make that referral, sorry. Thank you, Paul. You answered another question in there. Oh. <laughs> um, there was another question um, uh, relating to ZMED. Um, if you know what is happening with ZMED and if ZMED is not supported, what is the solution for the practice? Um, Sarah, do you want to answer this one? Yeah, sure. So ZMED isn't a current support, HealthLink supported um, software system that you can refer from directly within the software, but you can use the My HealthLink portal. So um, that's really easy to set up. It's just a quick phone call to HealthLink or you can send an email. Um, it is free of charge to you. You don't have, there's no cost associated with setting up an account. Once you get the account, you'll also have access to a wide variety of ranges of forms, not just the Sydney LHD 
um, service forms as well. So we'd probably recommend um, signing up for my HealthLink portal account. Thank you, Sarah. Um, I've got another question about when we receive notification regarding triage, does it include a time frame? Um, it can do. At the moment, we're leaving that decision down to the individual services. So we're trying to encourage as many of the services possible to actually put that. So if they've done an accept, to actually put the clinic appointments the, that the patients agreed to within that correspondence. And so a large chunk of them come out that way. For some of the others, it may be the case that they just say, based on wait in this six months um, expected wait time. One of the things that New South Wales Health as part of the outpatient service framework that was um, released just before the pandemic was to start putting some agreed terminology on those wait times. So that will start to slowly become a mandatory um, kind of correspondence feature going out to general practice. So there will be um, five categories um, from emergency, urgent, semi-urgent, kind of um, routine, et cetera, and even an advice um, category that will start to come out of that. And they will have a time frame around them. There's always going to be local caveats to that, but um, it, within the next 12 months, um, more of that will start to be corresponded out as we introduce um, or move um, further into the outpatient service framework. So, Well, thank um, you, Paul, and thank you, Sarah. Um, I just am very conscious of time, so I would like to thank to our speakers and thank for everyone for attending please do not do not hesitate to contact us for any assistance with electronic referrals to sydney local health district